to go home. I'm glad you were able to follow the lantern and make it back here. That was your third test. Your second was getting from here back to Earth. The hedge is not lenient. The hedge is not forgiving. The hedge feeds off of your fears and makes it worse. The shadows become denser. The trees become larger, more primeval. The face is more twisted. The hedge ghosts, they smell that. But even if you exude confidence, the thorns might come back to bite you in the ass. You have to learn to navigate the hedge. It is active. It is predatorial. It is always hungry, thirsting for glamour. Whenever you try to go from one place to another, and we've done tremendous distances in some nights, there's a trod that in four hours of walking will get you from New York City over to Denver, Colorado, but it only takes you 30 minutes if you're going from west to east. It's a place of dreams, upside down logic. Up is down, short is long, and everything you know is wrong. That's what the hedge is. But you're clever. And you were able to come back and find your way here. Congratulations. The hedge will always be trying to make things more dangerous for you. The same trod you go down will change based on its proximity to the mortal world. Of course, I should have mentioned that. If you enter a hedge gate walking through the front doors of the hospital, you will find poppies and flowers that smell of antiseptic and white tiled mushrooms across the floor, you will see hospital beds shaped out of marble, or maybe hobgoblins disguised as nurses. Were you followed? Does your fetch know? I should have warned you not to go back home. It's not your home anymore. You're not who you were when you were taken. When they took you, you're not that anymore. And time is so hard here in the hedge. Yes, it's you've been captive for a year and a day. But at home, maybe an afternoon passed. Maybe 30 years have passed. Maybe a simple summer. But you went back and you saw yourself, didn't you? And you saw right through that magic and disguise in its own mask. You, my friend have a fetch. When you were swept up from your home, from your canoe, from that place under the bed, from that path in the woods where you followed that siren song, you were swept up, and your keeper maybe took a rotten gourd of a pumpkin, shoved it on top of a willow branch, and stuffed it with, with, with newspapers and hedge thorns and, and rotten fruit, and told it, you are him. You are her. You are they. And it went, you got it went into your life. It took over your life. That is your fetch. It may know that it is magical. It may not. Maybe your children are aware of it. Maybe your partner is not. Fetches are you. But the two souls shared and shared by two bodies. One original being now separated into two. Your fetch has magic that will counteract or cancel out your abilities as well, but they have weaknesses. Your fetch has dreams. Your fetch can't do iron. Your fetch has been living your life for you. You can never go back home. I've, many have tried. How do you deal with that? You go home and there's someone with your face loving your family, and they've grown better. They were like you, but they finished their degree. They made a life for themselves. They were like you, but they never came out. Never rocked the boat. They were you, but they tried, and they loved, and they succeeded where you failed, or they failed where you would have succeeded. And then what? Just take it off, pop off its head, swallow its eye, regain part of your soul back, and just squeeze back into your family with the durance you've suffered, with the torture that the Fae have put upon you with their shadow magic. No. No changeling can do that successfully. And they're not even the worst of it. The shadow you, your fetch, that's just the tip of the iceberg. You've got the gentry themselves. They don't last here very long in the mortal world because of iron and time, but they are powerful. They are powerful. They are all powers. 
A fay itself is and is not. It is a collection of titles and embodiments. The Queen of Hurricanes is also just the cover-up to the King of Keyholes, and even then, the Baron of Broken Hearts, and each of them more dangerous and more violent and harder to guess its true name and function than the one before that. And they remember that you ran away, and they will come to take you back, or kill you forthright. They might not even care. The Hedge itself, you've got Hedge Beasts! Some of them the size of Oort clouds, some of them living, breathing caverns that's just one continuous stomach and mouth full of incredible treasures. And also empty, needing blood. Or maybe you'll just find the lying pixies, the ones with the horses' heads. That's right, and the six little arms. You'll find those. I've got a collection of them outside. Even the flora and the fauna can be sentient, can have something that you want have a power, or a secret, or an item you might need. Don't scratch out or eliminate the hedge. It is your back door to reality. It is one of your great inheritance as a changeling. It's a world that only you, and the occasional mage and lost child, or the seventh redhead in the seventh level, can access. You can build yourself your own hollow given time, like good old Vathic has. And you're welcome. You know the right entrance to go through. You know the right whistle and knock to get you inside my home. Welcome. But there are many things in the hedge that you'll need. Goblin fruit. A whole variety as far as the imagination can go. Grab a bloodberry. Bite into it. Look dead for an hour. Or recharge your glamour. It doesn't matter. The limits are your imagination of what you can crossbreed, what you can plant. And then you'll find tokens throughout the hedge as well, a set of car keys that lets you drive and avoid every red light that you're trying to pass through. Perhaps an old army coat that will never let you bleed through knives or your own devices. Perhaps a camera that will photograph a subject but also show you its greatest desire in the Polaroid it pops out. Perhaps you will find a personalized token, your own icon. That photo of her you used to keep in your wallet. Your favorite summer hat. The book bag you were wearing when you wandered off into the woods. If you can find your icon, or a phase, and you can reclaim it, you will become closer to reassembling that broken soul that you now have. But just because it is broken does not mean it needs to be fixed. Just because you have experienced pain doesn't mean that you can't experience joy again. You are a changeling. Your world is a construction and a contraption of unending Rube Goldfarbian horrors and beautiful madness. Friend, you are not who you were when they took you. That life you are going to have has been cut off by fate. No amount of pleading or contracts or fairy magic can bring it back. But you can become so much more. You may be lost. You may be without clarity. But as long as you remember that you are a changeling, you are not alone. I may even have an idea to help you. So I pledge... The free use of my cloak and my lantern in order to remove from your heart to take away all of the fear and weakness that it possesses. I pledge you this. A year and a day. Follow my lantern's light and I will lead you to only strength. So. Catch it up and turn, catch a fire and burn for you.